We'll talk about steps we're taking to help people get through this tough time. And we're also going to talk about steps we're taking to help communities prepare, plan, and recover and make our nation more resilient in future heat waves. And there will be more. I don't think anybody can deny the impact of climate change anymore. There used to be a lot of time when I first got here, a lot of people said, oh, it's not a problem. Well, I don't know anybody. I shouldn't say that. I don't know anybody who honestly believes climate change is not a serious problem. Just take a look at the historic floods in Vermont and California earlier this year. Droughts and hurricanes that are growing more frequent and intense. Wildfires spreading a smoky haze for thousands of miles, worsening air quality. The record temperatures, and I mean record, are now affecting more than 100 million Americans. Puerto Rico reached a 125-degree heat index last month. San Antonio hit an all-time heat index high of 117 last month. Phoenix has been over 110 degrees for 27 straight days. And with El Nino and the short-term warming of the ocean that exacerbates the effects of climate change, making forecasts even hotter in the coming months. Ocean temperatures near Miami are like stepping in a hot tub. They just topped 100 degrees, 100 degrees and they're hitting record highs around the world. And that's more like, as I said, jumping in a hot tub than jumping in an ocean to ride a wave. Most people don't realize for years heat has been, the, no, I have to admit, I didn't know it either. I thought it, I, I knew it was tough, but the number one weather-related killer is heat. The number one weather-related killer is heat. 600 people die annually from its effects more than from floods, hurricanes, tor and tornadoes in America combined. And even those places that are used to extreme heat have never seen it as hot as it is now for as long as it's been. Even those who deny that we're in the midst of a climate crisis can't deny the impact of extreme heat is having on Americans. Americans, like an elderly woman in Phoenix, who fell out of her wheelchair and after five minutes on the ground had third-degree burns, third-degree burns, or the firefighter who's already has a lug over 45 pounds of gear through smoke and flame, which is incredibly hot. The job is even harder and more dangerous to do in record heat. For the farm workers who have to harvest crops in the dead of night to avoid the high temperatures, or farmers who risk losing everything they planted for the year, or the construction workers who literally risk their lives working all day in blazing heat, and in some places don't even have the right to take a water break. Dear friends, this is serious. Government officials have confirmed a 50% benefit cut may be coming for Social Security beneficiaries. But President Biden may have a new plan that could solve this issue. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video for all of the latest news. Also, tomorrow, I will be announcing several more winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. My friends, please make sure that you enter these giveaways by clicking and liking several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on friends, the greater your chances of winning these weekly giveaways. While most Americans can expect Social Security's cost of living adjustment to be much smaller in 2024, Thanks to reduced inflation, boomers might be hit hardest. They stand to lose more than the greatest generation simply because they paid more into the program. They also rely on it more than any retired Social Security recipients. The Senior Citizens League predicts that next year's COLA increase could just be 3.1%. That is less than half of this year's 8.7% which was the largest gain in four decades. The COLA is calculated based on inflation in the third quarter of the prior year. Thanks to rate adjustments by the U.S. Federal Reserve, inflation has slowed over the last several months. But last year, there was rapid inflation that left many Americans in great debt and struggling with their finances. A smaller COLA increase could make it much harder for retirees to pay down debt that is accrued during these inflationary times. Additionally, COLA increases do not necessarily keep pace with inflation.
between the years of January 2000 and February 2023. Social Security benefits increase by just 78%. This is while food, utilities, and many other goods and services had increased by 142%, while an increase of 3.1% for Social Security is still an increase. It's not likely to keep pace with inflation. Individuals who rely on Social Security may have to look into investments or other sources of income to continue to make ends meet in these challenging times. As the Social Security Old Age and Survivors Insurance Trust Fund is depleted by the year 2033, President Biden has suggested a sweeping four-point plan to bolster funds in the trust fund and help fill the $22.4 trillion funding shortage. President Biden has suggested a sweeping four-point plan. If the federal government cannot fix the shortage, it may result in benefit cuts of up to 24% for retirees, beginning in 2032. While some of Biden's proposed changes will affect mostly high earners and company executives, some will also affect middle and lower income wage earners, especially those who may rely on Social Security benefits in the near future. Any Social Security overhaul plan would require bipartisan support in Washington, D.C., and so far, Democrats and Republicans have not been able to see eye to eye on ways to simultaneously bolster Social Security funding. With millions of Americans facing broiling heat across the Southwest, President Biden plans to announce new steps to improve weather forecasts and make drinking water more accessible. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean Pierre described the heat wave as a difficult time, and said Biden was treating climate change with the urgency it requires. Climate activists and some Democrats have pushed Biden to declare a climate emergency, but the White House has resisted. Phoenix, Arizona has seen at least 26 days in a row of temperatures exceeding 110 degrees. San Antonio, Texas saw 15 straight days of 100 plus degrees. The Department of Labor has confirmed that it's developing a standard for how workplaces deal with heat. The proposed rule by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration would require employers to provide adequate water and rest breaks to outdoor workers, as well as medical services and training to address signs and symptoms of heat-related illness. In order to keep low-income populations cool, the Department of Health and Human Services expanded its low-income home energy assistance program to provide more access to air conditioning and cooling centers, such as libraries, senior centers, or other public buildings. More than 100 members of Congress have called on the administration to implement the new heat standard for outdoor workers as quickly as possible. The lawmakers wrote in a letter, we know extreme weather events, such as heat waves, are becoming more frequent and more dangerous due to climate change. So dear friends, please let me know how hot it has been in your city or state. Well, my beautiful and my most amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Thursday. My friends, thank you so much for joining me here and for being part of this community. To say thank you and to show my appreciation, I will be announcing several winners tomorrow for the Walmart gift card giveaway. My friends, if you'd like to enter these weekly giveaways, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed Thursday.